guys. So, in case you don't know, my name is Kendall, and I will be continuing in this service series that we, that we started on Tuesday. We just heard an amazing message from Grace and about the silence of God, and I'm really just amazed to be able to see how that applies to what I'm going to speak about right now. So, if you do are taking notes, if not, it's cool. But this message is called The Struggle in the Struggle. I'm going to read that again. The Struggle in the Struggle. And so there's a lot of there's a lot of messages out there that talks about like, oh, like it's okay, don't do the process, like it's it's fine, just keep going and everything. But like not a lot of people understand, like, you don't know my struggle. You know what I mean? Like there's not a lot of people actually say that you don't know what I'm going through. Yes, it's a struggle, but you actually understand what is going on with me right now. So I can think of any other person in the Bible to talk about and that relates to this top topic thing. The story of Elijah. And usually when you go hear about Elijah, you hear about the great prophet who never died, who called fire down from heaven, that killed all the prophets of Baal. It's amazing stories. But this story, we're talking about the story right after that. And how he went through a struggle himself. Alright, so if you have a Bible, I'm going to read in 1 Kings 19, starting in verse 1. I'm again, 1 first, first Kings 19, verse 1 in NLT. It says, When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything that Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent his mess, this message to Elijah. May the God strike me and even kill me, if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you, just as you killed them. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left the servant there. Then he went on and alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. Then he lay down, slept under the broom tree, but as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, get up and eat. He looked around, and there, besides his head, it was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then an angel came back again and touched him and said, get up and eat some more, or the journey ahead will, will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to the Mount Sinai, the Mount of God. There he came to a cave where he spent the night. Let's pray. God, I thank you for all the messages that have come before me, what you have spoken through them, Father, I just pray the same thing today, Father, to this message. You speak, not me. Let your will be done, not mine. I ask that you give us eyes to see today and ears to hear your word. In your name, amen. amen. So, I have a funny story to tell you. And it may not be believable due to the fact of my figure, but senior year of high school, I ran cross country. I know. You're thinking, how is this possible? I look, I'm not that, like, I'm not skinny. I'm not, I am athletic, but I'm not that athletic. But I did do cross country. I was one of those people that, that actually ran. Did I enjoy it? No. <laughs> You're probably wondering why I did it. I don't even know why. My senior year self would probably say, I wanted to make friends. I wanted to be able to like me. And so that's probably why I did it. And I ended up getting a lot of friends, but only two of them I still stay in contact with today. But literally, I hated cross country. I do not understand why people would like running just for the, for the sake of it. I don't get it. Like, there's no desti there's a destination, but it's just like, oh, I'm not just trying to get back and try to like stop somebody from scoring. Why should I get back to block somebody? It's just, I'm just gonna run just, just for the heck of it. That makes no sense. It doesn't. And literally, the practices are just, oh my gosh. They are Saying, for a warm up, we would run around a football field, an entire football field, at least five times. Three of them had to be full on sprints, two of them, the actual jog, and one of them is like, well, you can sprint and jog if you want to. I took the jog part, which kind of turned to walking. But look, <laughs> I did cross, I did it though. I actually did all of the regular season races. I was not the slowest person, but I was one of the slowest. My fastest time was a 30 minutes and 53 seconds for a 5K. That's 3.1 miles. 
And in every race, it was literally torture. And I walked half of it. And I don't right to. I can't I can't run like the like most cross country people can. Like they just like, oh it's fine. I I'm good. Just draw my pace. I'm like, this is torture. How do y'all like this? But Literally, like there were times during each race where I'm like, I don't want to do this no more. I'm just gonna get off, get off the path. I'm just gonna like quit. I'm done. This is too much for me. But each time I did finish, I didn't finish the way I wanted to, but I did finish. And it's funny how we can compare a cross country race to the life of a Christian and how it's a race. Paul talks about in 2 Timothy how we are already a race. And in this, in this instance, in the, in the story of Elijah right now, like, after, this is all right after he defeated and killed all of the prophets of Baal, where literally he got challenged by them and saying, oh, let's just assess who died stronger. And they did all crazy types of things. They, they cut their toes off, they bled themselves, they strip themselves, like, we'll do it, we did everything. And Elijah's like, just saying, like, are you done yet? You, you good? Is that it? Okay, sweet. Hey, God, can you bring down the fire? This is, the, this is an AB, a Negro bridge version, <laughs> not the actual Bible version. So he told God that, asking, hey, can you bring down the fire? And God brought down the fire, killing everybody. And immediately, he's like, that's my God. That's the success in that book. And he was going right, he was running the race great. And then all of a sudden, Jezebel, the queen at the time, hears about this, who was a huge worshiper of Baal, and she's like, I want that man dead. He sends a message to Elijah saying, you will be dead by tomorrow. And immediately, Elijah runs for the hills. It literally says in scripture, when Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. This is the same man who called down fire from heaven. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, in an instant, from having faith to not having faith, it happened in a blink. And one of my favorite pastors, Joseph Prince, talked about this in a message, saying that he, Elijah saw and then he forgot everything. He wasn't walking by faith anymore. He was walking by what he saw. And so Elijah ran, and he goes all the way to Beersheba, and even further, and he's literally saying, that's it. I am done. I'm not doing this no more. They're trying to kill me. I just want to die right now. But how many times do we, as Christians, as I'm talking to a lot of believers and a lot of future pastors, future minister, ministers in here, have gone, have had a Elijah period where we've had a victorious moment that God's done so many great things, and then all of a sudden, in a blank, one bad thing happens, or one unexpected thing happens, and we immediately forget everything that just happened, and we just see what's in front of us. And it's just, it's crazy because we're like, wait, God, you promised me this. You told me that I'm going to be a pastor. You told me that I'm going to lead people to you. You told me that I am going to proclaim your name to nations, whether that's you know, as a missionary or as an evangelist. It doesn't really matter. But I'm not seeing this. You told me this, and I'm seeing this. You told me this, and I'm, I'm not seeing what you, told, what you told me that was going to happen. All I'm seeing is what's in front of me. All I'm seeing is an obstacle. All I'm seeing is like a wall. What's happening right now? And this is literally what Elijah did. He took his eyes off of God and took his eyes on what was in front of him. But in Hebrews 11, 1, it says, Faith the assurance of things hoped for, of things not yet seen. And so immediately, Elijah forgot about his faith, took his eyes off of God, stopped walking by faith, and walked, walked by what he saw. And what he saw was a threat, a threatening letter from Jezebel saying that I'm going to kill you. How many times have we stopped walking by faith? How many times have we stopped 
walking by what God told us and just looked at what's in front of us. How many times have we forgotten everything that God has done, every miracle, every door that's been opened, every provision that he has given us, and then just only see, oh, um, yes, that was, I totally forgot about that, but all I'm seeing is this. This is way bigger than everything God's done for me. This is way bigger than anything that God can do. And literally in this, in the struggle, it's like, we literally are just like hard pressed and we are like just tired because we are doing everything that God told us to do, but we're still not seeing anything yet. I'm doing what Pastor Sammy said. I'm pushing the plow, breaking the ground, and sowing the seed. I've been doing that for years. I've been doing that for months. Maybe it maybe should be days. I don't even know. But still, I'm not seeing any fruit. I'm not seeing anything grow. You told me to plant the seed. I planted the seed. I'm still not seeing any growth. Doing the minister to these kids. I'm still not seeing anything. They're still acting the same way. I haven't seen any salvations. I haven't seen any like growth. I haven't seen any change at all. That seed is still a seed. It's not a full grown tree yet. God, you told me this. Why is this happening? Basically, it should have something to hope for, not seen. So, but it's not faith. We're only going by what we see and not what we hope for. And most times in the process, we want to give up. We want to quit. We want to stop because we're not seeing what we hope for. We think that it's going to happen like this. But it's not. That's not what a process is. A process is a long time. That's what it is. In Habakkuk 2, verses 2 through 3, the prophet actually really does state this very well for people who are actually going through a process. I, I pray you hear these words and just write out your heart. He says, Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can carry the correct messages to others. This vision is for a future time. Let me repeat that. This vision is for a future time. It describes the end. It will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently. For it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. And what the prophet is saying there is that it's coming. Your breakthrough is coming. Your provision is coming. Your blessing is coming. You just got to keep breaking the ground and sowing the seed. Push the plow, break the ground, and sow the seed. Keep doing what God asked you to do. Keep doing what God told you to do. And you will see a harvest. You will see a blessing. You will see a provision if you just keep doing what he said. And I know sometimes you're like, I'm at the end of my ropes here. I've done everything. These people still aren't getting saved. These people still aren't doing this. I'm still not where I want to be. Yeah, you promised me this. I just want to tell you this. God did not bring you this far just to drop you off. It's good. God did not just bring all of, have to go through all this stuff, all of this hardship, all of this turmoil and trial and tribulations, just to say, well, have fun. I'm going to be back up in heaven. Like, you're, you're good from here. That's not what God did. Jesus, Jesus' name is Emmanuel, God with us. So even in the process, God is with us. He's not just there back in the beginning where he was when he first called us. He's also with us right now in the process. He's also with you in the end, waiting, saying, waiting to tell you, well done, good and faithful servant. You have served me well. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. He says in John that I'm going away so I can give you something better. The Holy Spirit that comforts us when we're going through struggles, when we're going through hardship. The first point that, that summarizes everything I've been saying right now is you have to keep going because you're not that far away. You may just be one step from your blessing, one step from your provision or from your breakthrough, yet all you're seeing is the obstacle, all you're seeing is the wall, all you're seeing is the opposition instead of believing what God told you. If God says he'll be with you, he's going to be with you. If God says he'll get you through to the other side, he will get you through to it. It literally says, a back it says, for it will surely take place. 
It will not be delayed. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently. In Colossians 1.12, actually Colossians 1.11 through 12, it says, it says this, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power so that you will have the endurance, let me repeat that, that you will have all the endurance, someone say endurance, endurance, endurance. and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. The definition of endurance, according to Google, is this, to suffer. This is not really something uplifting or encouraging, but it's just the truth, blame Google. Suffer something painfully or difficult, patiently. It does not mean, oh, in a minute, done, or an hour, done, or in a day, done, or possibly a week, done, maybe a month, done. It may take a few months. It may take a few years. I've met people who like, I'm, I've been patient with God. I've done what God asked me to do, and I, and I ask that he provide what give me desire in my heart. Somebody says, I want to have that have that status of being in a relationship. Somebody say I want that job, I want that car, I want that provision, and yet still I'm not getting it. But it says this endurance is to suffer patiently. You just have to be patient. Which is it, it's hard for me because I hate waiting. I literally hate waiting. But we have to wait because that's what God has told us to do. To wait. To wait on the Lord. Literally, Grace has said, be still, and I am God. Know that I am God. Sometimes we have to just stop and remember who God is. And remember what he promised us. And Elevation Words was song, do it again. The, the bridge is, I've seen you move. You can move the mountains. I believe you'll do it again. You made a way when there was no way. So I'll believe I'll see you do it again. We have to actually believe that and just sing it at Sundays. We actually have to believe that if God made a way back then, he will make a way right now. We have to believe that I've seen God move mountains I didn't think were possible to move. So I mean, he's going to do it again. It may not be the same type of intensity, but I know he will do it. You're not that far away from your blessing. And I know that for... When you're going through a struggle, you immediately want to look at the person next to you or the person to your right. And you're thinking, why? I'm going through all this stuff, and they're going through the same thing, but there's, they're getting blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing, and I'm only getting hardship, oppression, heartache, heartbreak. Why are they getting this stuff, and I'm not getting this stuff? And literally, immediately, we forget everything God's done, we get everything God's doing. We think, oh, Let's focus on this person. Let's focus on what they're doing, and how God's doing, what God's doing in their life. And we're thinking, and sometimes we think, oh, what if I do what they're doing? They're, they're in the same struggle as I am. Let's, let's jump in their path. Let's follow their journey. But here's the thing. God did not call you to live their journey. God did not call you to walk their path. That's their path, their journey alone. They went through struggles that you may not have to go through. So immediately, when you decide, I'm going to jump into their path and walk their walk, it's harder. And it's more, it's worse than you thought it would be. And you forget how far you were originally, and immediately you have to start over again trying to walk someone else's life, walk someone else's path. And God's like, why are you doing that? You are so close. And you may not realize that you actually may be one step away from getting what you've been wanting for so long. But you threw all of that away because you want to live someone else's life and have their blessings and their provisions and their great things that they've never to happen to them. You gotta stay in your lane, not merge. Like Justin said, like yes, you have to, you're in the left lane, and then to the middle lane, and then to the right lane, and get to the exit. Sometimes you gotta stay in your lane until it's the right proper time. Until you gotta get to that exit to get that breakthrough. Second point, you gotta keep going because they couldn't take you out. 
They is the devil and the demons of hell. 